Hello and welcome to another Fab Totem video. In this one I'm going to take you through the steps needed to set up a subtractive path to be able to take advantage of the milling capability of the Fab Totem. So I'm going to use GIMP. There are other programs that people like to use but this one's fairly straightforward and I'm used to it. So you select the area you want to turn into a path with the wand tool. Click on it. It will then select it. You then go over to paths, right click and create selection to path or we'll then create your path I already have one so I'm just going to delete that do that with every single individual section you want to turn into a, an etching or a pocket uh, whatever you want to, to cut away and then save export each one as an individual file but make sure that they're all on the correct layout Next step is to go to justcut.org and then start importing your stuff. For me, being from the UK, everything in millimetres, put the thickness of your material in, put the diameter of your milling tool, the maximum pass depth, milling speed. You can always turn this up in the Fab Totem, so I tend to opt for it being a little bit lower than maybe it should be. So open up your files. And it will import them there. Then you just carefully and with a lot of patience click. And then once you've selected one item, you can create your operation, tell it what you want to do, how deep you want it to go, and click generate. I'll generate your g-code for you. Um, I like to set it to zero and return. And this will tell you how big your item is if you haven't been paying attention to scale. So if you have a specific size in mind, you can now use this combined with the PP pixels per inch to scale it down to what you want it to be. So for example, I actually only want this to be eight centimeters across, so 80 millimeters. So I take the largest value exactly the same effectively so 275 divided by the size I want it to be so 80 millimeters so 3.43 and then times that number by 96 so actually I want to tell it I've got a PPI of 330 now I want to generate it lower left it is now 18 well, 79 close enough um, so you can select your operation type from here so that actually removes all the material from the selected area that one just carves out the inside of the path that one carves out the outside that one engraves it so the tool runs along the line and V pocket is if you have a uh, pocketed space which has got and your tool has got a not flat end on it so in this case we're going to engrave and we're going to engrave it to point two. Generate. And that will create oh no pocket to point to generate. Well generate that. So then if you want something else to do something different, you select the next item, create operation, and tell it what you want to do. So let's say we want this one to engrave at we now get the engraving and for the last but not least we shall say the lettering damn you why is it hard to click on okay you got one Oh, two, three, and four. Okay, and this one we are going to pocket it as well. And we're going to have that one at point three. No, point oh three. Uh, I feel more like this is going to take too long, so point. Oh, 
and there we are. So it's going to hollow these two bits out and then leave this one as an engraving. So make sure you've got everything zeroed and return to zero zero at the end, especially if you're going to do multiple operations over the same item. For example, if you didn't level the bed quite right the first time, you'll be able to basically run it again and maybe drop the height just a little bit to be able to, to, to get the bits you missed. And then you save the G-code. You know, you're going to need to open up the folder because you're going to need to change some stuff. So open it with a notepad editor. I use notepad++. And now at the very beginning, you're going to need to paste in some code. And I, just for good measure, so this is the speed you're going to run your spindle at. So having messed around a little bit, I'm going to set that to a slightly higher number. And then you also need to add G code at the very end. Oops. And M107. Save. And then you've got your GCO generated. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, leave a like and subscribe, and keep an eye out for my next video in which I'll actually go through the process of engraving a piece of aluminium. Also, check out some of the other stuff we've done, which ranges from making food to filming lightning strikes.